Thank you very much for joining us for the main news on Kamnet TV. My name is Marco Kwakozi. Let's look at the stories making the headlines. Mississippi compound residents bemoan the high millimeter prices. Government denies demonizing the former President Edgar Lungu's family. Social scientists predict the fall of the patriotic front. In international news, South Africa's Zulu King denies being poisoned. And in sports news, Copper Queen's midfielder Avel Chitundu optimistic of a better performance at the World Cup. For details of these and other stories, join us shortly after this break. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Thank you very much for joining us and now the news in detail. Some residents of Lusaka's Mississi compound have complained over the escalating prices of Medimil, which is fetching between 215 kwacha and 230 kwacha. In an interview with Kamnet News, some residents explained that the high price of the commodity is making their lives difficult and have also complained on the reluctance by millers to reduce the Medimil price. And some of the millers spoken to say it is impossible for them to reduce the price of the commodity due to many factors. We have details in the following report. Public outcry continues as the price of millimill escalates. Many citizens are failing to afford to buy the step of food due to the high price. In Lusaka's Mississippi compound, most residents have resorted to buying small repackaged quantities of millimil in plastic bags, commonly known as Pamela, as they cannot afford to buy a 25-kg bag. A check in various outlets found a 25-kg bag of breakfast millimil being sold between 215 and 230 kwacha. The residents in Mississippi compound have bemoaned the reluctance by millers to reduce the minimal price. They have observed that if the minimal price continue to increase, this would send people, especially the grassroots, to become beggars. <laughs> At least want to bank a lot of to otherwise unga wakwela. Oh, munga buy na mafami ziambili na kudi munga lunch nali katima diache lunch ni ni tea. Sa pati kudi diache kamoz bete. So munga pa unga pe bete danda ola mene bina duri da vintu. So to pay pa kuti banga eh se kuti bwa zako shepa ngo ola bina bina duri la man kuti bantu munga isa bina kuti beva beva zimu na tisek. So nga wanka la che suna guri se nchuzi tiba na swazadi wana swaza punzi. For this woman here who depends on a small vegetable business, the cost of living has become too high and the miller's failure to reduce the price of millimil has greatly contributed to this. She tells this reporter that she is contemplating whether to go for a dental appointment or buy a bag of millimil to feed a family. <laughs> Meanwhile, some of the millers spoken to had this to say. The price of uh, maize was triggered up to impress the farmers, maybe to, to do more. To, uh, to, to, to get more efforts and uh, uh, more in farming, maybe like uh, we can have a bumper harvest or something. Yeah, maybe that's the reason, but it has uh, triggered the price of minimum possibly to go up. So if they can reduce uh, the, uh, the price of fertilizer, they reduce the price of uh, maize seeds and everything, maybe by doing that, 
maize price can be can go down definitely. Also, the millimill price can go down. The issue of pricing maize and by consequence millimill is as controversial. The question remains. Which one should be prioritized over the other? Should the government set a low floor price for the Food Reserve Agency to purchase maize in order to ensure affordable millimill and consequently force the rural farmers to subsidize the town dwellers? Or should the government set a high floor price for FRIA to purchase maize and by consequently pushing the town dweller with high millimill price while allowing the rural farmers to rejoice in windfall? Miriam Kaimba reporting for Kamne TV News. Solwezi Central Member of Parliament, Stafford Mulusa, says he is disappointed with a contractor working on a one by three classroom block at Kajiwa Primary School in Solwezi District. In an interview, Mr. Mulusa disclosed that Baraka Traders was paid 25% of the total total amount to construct a one by three classroom block at Kajiwa Primary School, which it has failed to deliver. He explains that he will soon engage the contractor in order to understand the challenges they are faced with. The lawmaker says local contractors must work up to the expectations of government and like what, they, what is currently happening. See, after someone gets 25% of the initial payment of the project, you expect that they will move beyond here and maybe go to window level or something. But what is happening is uh, very disappointing. And, and you are right, we were here on the 13th of May. Mm -hmm. And we found that uh, the box was not uh, finished. And the only work that they have done under two months is just to, you know, to, 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 to put up uh, a box. Put, uh, not, this is not even gravel, just, this is just soil. We expect them to bring gravel and the plaster, just the box, in two months. It means that our contractor here, who is, uh, is it Barak? Did you say Barak? It's Barak. It's Barak. Barak. He's failing. He's failing. But I don't want to conclude because uh, I've also had a problem where uh, some of these contractors are complaining that the council is not paying them on time where they finish. But you see, when you talk about 25%, uh, 25% you go beyond this. Uh, it means that our people also are giving priority to 25%, maybe buying small cars or doing any other business apart from this. This is a problem with the, the local contractors. Also. You see, when you are given that money, you think everything now has finished. Now you have reached. Now you can buy. No, 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 no. When you are given the 25%, it is for the project. If you are objective, you use that money to build even three quarters of the project. Some of those people with money, they are building on their own. They just go and claim money from the council after going far. That's what we have seen. You see? So this is a clear indication that Barak is in the failure mode. Barak is in the failure mode and we want to contact them. We want to sit down with them since they are local contractors to see what challenges they are facing. Zambia Empowerment Hub for Entrepreneurship and Skills Training, Zehest Executive Director Clarence Muzamba, has called for financial project and business trainings among the beneficiaries of the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. Mr. Muzamba says his hub has been receiving reports from Tawama Constituency that some of the beneficiaries of the CDF are not using the resources to are not using the resources as it is intended. He says those benefiting from the CDF need to realize that the resources are a revolving fund which should be paid back in order for others to benefit. He says there is need to enhance financial literacy in the beneficiaries to ensure that the resources, once borrowed, are paid back. We can quickly uh, advise that OCDF beneficiaries undergo financial projects and business management trainings. Uh, we say so because uh, we see many people defaulting when it comes to 
by the way, these are funds are loans, and if people don't undergo trainings, uh, financial trainings on how to implement uh, these projects, we see a lot of uh, projects failing to take place. We are, rece we are receiving uh, stories uh, at our hub that uh, some people who got this, the funds are using it for other purposes, not uh, for projects implementation. So we are just cautioning uh, all beneficiaries to, to know that these are actually loans and they need to be paid back. It's a revolving fund. You get the CDF, you use it to, to the benefit of the community and also another group also benefits. Former President Edgar Lungo's children have lamented over unfair treatment from the state. Addressing the media in Lusaka Tuesday, Tawama Member of Parliament Tasira Lungu, who spoke on behalf of her siblings, says the state has not made it easy for them to operate as it has been playing to the gallery in matters that relate to her family. Ms. Lungu says the family only gets to hear about certain lawsuits in the media instead of being the first to receive the information. And Acting Minister of Information and Media, Makozo Chito Chikote, in a statement made available to Cabinet News, has denied the allegations by the former President Edgar Lungo's children that government has played a part in influencing the alleged demonization on various media platforms of some, mem some members of that family. Some of you may call our father different names. He remains a caring father to us. Children of the former president, Ed Galungu, have finally spoken out on what they term unfair treatment by the state. Since the patriotic front was removed from office in August of 2021, former president Lungu's children, among them Dalisa Lungu and Tasila Lungu, have on several occasions appeared before law enforcers in matters, they are accused of being in possession of properties reasonably suspected of being proceeds of crime. The children who gathered at their father's residence Tuesday morning and represented by Chawama Member of Parliament, Tasila Lungu, says they have endeavored to lead a quiet life after their father left office, but that it has become fashionable to demonize the Lungu family based on unfolded allegations. Lives have revolved around family and constantly being invited to law enforcement agencies. We have endeavored to lead a quiet life after our father left office in August of 2021. We must hasten to say that we are not objectionable to the law enforcement agencies making inquiries into any matter that we have constantly and consistently complied with the law enforcement agencies. Despite our compliance, it seems to us that it has become fashionable to demonize the Longo family based on the unfounded allegations. The state has, made it, has not made it any easier for us, as they seem to play to the gallery in matters that relate to our family. Mrs. Mwansa, who was in the company of her husband, also says the state has not made it easier for them in that most lawsuits against her family members are first learned from social media before even receiving the information. We have finally obtained the necessary documents and will proceed to respond appropriately. Our appeal to all of you is to allow us to defend ourselves in court. The dramatization of our circumstances by the state in the daily tabloids has only worked to demonize our father, who has diligently worked to serve this country and willingly handed over power to the incumbent. We have spent considerable time with our father and our mother, who in all these difficult times have opted to remain silent. Sorry. Our father's resolve is to allow the law to take its course and we agree with his position whereas some of you may call our father different names he remains a caring father to us and a loving husband to our mother meanwhile 
Acting Minister of Information and Media and Chief Government Spokesperson Makozo Chikote, in a statement made available to Cabinet News, has denied allegations by the former President Lungo's children that government has played a part in influencing the alleged demonization on various media platforms of some members of the family who are alleged to own property suspected to be proceeds of crime. Mr. Chikote has emphasized that government's intention is not to demonize any individual or family, let alone members of the family of the former president, but rather to ensure transparency, accountability, and adherence to the rule of law. Pudis Chota, reporting for Community News. The Community Action Against Corruption has charged that the press conference by the family of former President Edgar Lungu was not necessary despite respecting their freedom of expression. Organization Chief Executive Officer Brighton Tembo has described the conference as being an emotional event which has no bearing on the cases the family has been accused of. Mr. Tembo has advised the, first, the former first family to stop defending and discussing the challenges they are facing with the law enforcement agencies in the media, but wait for their opportunity in the courts of law where their defense against accusations of acquiring properties beyond their income can mean a lot. We feel the press briefing called by the former first family to express themselves over the allegations which they are facing um, was not very much necessary because if you look at that press briefing it was just an emotional event which just brought out emotions which unfortunately have no bearing on the allegations which the first family is facing. So what we can advise the first family, if they have evidence pertaining to the cases which they are facing, they should keep those case, uh, evidences and wait for the right opportunity to come if they will be taken to court, as it was stated, so that they can defend themselves in the courts of law. Unlike uh, calling a press briefing which has no bearing on the cases they are facing, apart from maybe winning the sympathy and emotions of the people. Unfortunately, the law has no emotions, so we can only advise them to wait for the cases to be taken to court so that they can express themselves. They will attain their freedom if they are never committed any wrong, and they can be convicted if there was a wrong committed by them. A social scientist, Innocent Colana, has predicted that the opposition patriotic front will go into oblivion in an event it fails to hold its general convention on the 28th of October 2023. In an interview, Mr. Colana observes that there is poor leadership and lack of direction by the party as evidenced by a number of adjournments on the much-awaited convention. He says Zambians need a strong opposition political party to continue offering proper checks and balances to the ruling UPND, but that its failure to mobilize for the convention will leave it in a dilemma. Meanwhile, PF Acting Media Director Edwin Lefekelo says in an event the party fails to hold its convention on the slated date, it will still remain a strong opposition political party. As the former ruling party said the 28th of October 2023 as the date to which it is going to hold its general convention, various stakeholders hope that the set date will be maintained. The Patriotic Front Party has made several postponements in holding its convention, citing many factors. This time around, stakeholders predict that any failure will result in the party going into oblivion. Political scientist Innocent Kolala has this view. 
What will happen in case this uh, convention won't take place in October? That marks the end of this political party. We know that it has been in intensive care for some time, but that will be now the barrier, the death of this political party, because what we are going to see after October will be those who have patience uh, with this political party, maybe that it can be resuscitated, then they are going to lose that patience and they will start now joining other political parties, even those who want to lead uh, the, 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 this political party and they have that enthusiasm of leading the country. While many have alleged that the former ruling party is a dead organization, which the people rejected at the ballot, Mr. Kolala says the former ruling party needs to organize itself as Zambians need a strong opposition to offer proper checks and balance to the ruling party. As much as some of the members, they still have faith and confidence in this political party. Not only the members who have faith and confidence in this political party, even the Zambians, because we need a strong opposition to the ruling political party such that I think they can be uh, offering proper checks and balance for the best interest of the Zambian people. But what we have been seeing of late, uh, especially of this uh, former political uh, ruling political party, is much to be desired because in most cases uh, the leaders there they are more of the person personal persona personalities have taken the center stage as unlike ensuring that they put the people whom they are representing in this political party uh, 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 on top while some have resigned and ceased to be members of the patriotic front such as former media director Antonio Mwanza who has cited poor leadership, lack of direction and failure by PF top leadership to mobilize for the convention which has left the party structures in dilemma. PF acting media director Edwin Lifuekelo has rubbished claims of poor leadership and that the party is going into oblivion. Of course the prophets of doom will tell you that PF will be buried, yes. I know that yes indeed they have been concerned by members of the public. Uh, that this convention has been postponed from time to time, I think in a number of times. But ideally, I think there are many uh, reasons why it is so. I think that there are many, many issues that have to be put in place before the convention. So we are hopeful uh, that uh, come October, the convention will be held. And uh, of course, anything is bound to happen at that particular time. But uh, let's cross the bridge when we come there. For now, the date has been set and we are all geared uh, to ensure that the convention takes place. So there's no burying of PF. Actually, the more they want to bury PF, the more we germinate, the more seeds are germinating. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamli TV News. A civil rights activist, Brebma Tangara, has alleged that President Haga in the Hitlema has a hand in the alleged brutality on opposition leaders in the country. Speaking when he featured on Kamnet TV's program dubbed National Matters on Monday, Mr. Tangara has wondered why the head of state has not taken any action on allegations of political brutality. Meanwhile, Patriotic Front Deputy Publicity and Information Chairperson Emmanuel Mwamba has maintained that the government is focusing on silencing its opponents. Here's a report. Again, don't say the government is witch hunting. No. Give to Caesar. While in government, this is the stance of the head of state on various platforms. Opposition leaders in the country have continued to cry foul over what they have termed as opposition brutality. Patriotic Front Deputy Publicity and Information Chairperson Emmanuel Mwamba has maintained that the government is focusing on silencing its opponents. Mr. Mwamba says he is not even aware of the status in the case he was allegedly brutalized while in police custody. Speaking when he featured on the Kamla TV program dubbed National Matters, the former ambassador wonders why opposition leaders are the only ones targeted for state abuse. My injuries have been ridiculed. The uh, director, spokesperson for um, government, Mr. Tabokawana, went on KBN TV and ridiculed me, doubted my explanation, called them lies. He might not trust me, but he should trust a doctor. 
mm. that assessed me, mm. that made uh, me do tests, including X-ray. Featuring on the same program, civil rights activist Brebna Changala alleged that President Hichlema is the one leading the alleged brutality on opposition leaders in the country, explaining that the head of state has failed to act on matters of brutality. The important thing which the new Dawn administration should have done when they came into power, because they experienced this police brutality, mm. was to do some structural changes in the manner the police are managed, mm. in the manner the command flows down to the last uh, constable. Mm. They've changed nothing because then they are good men. It won't work. Mm. What about the day again when bad men will come? Mm. It will be the same. So this brutality which we are, we are seeing, the torture, is at the behest and the command of the commander-in-chief. Mr. Changala also alleged that the corruption fight in the country is targeted at former government officials because law enforcement agencies such as the Anti-Corruption Commission are under the office of the president. Meanwhile, the government has quashed allegations of police brutality on opposition political leaders in the country. The kind of police brutality we saw uh, in the previous regime uh, and what we are seeing today, which is not brutality at all, uh, really cannot be compared. And where were the voices when we underwent serious... You get into conflict with the law, you will suffer the consequences of the law. Uh, so uh, this idea of trying to paint the police black and claiming that they are brutal, and yet you are deliberately breaking the law with session. So the date there is very clear, it's 2016, under the hand of President Edgar Lungu that moved the Anti-Corruption Commission to join the rest of the law enforcement agencies. The truth of the matter remains that the Anti-Corruption Commission was moved to the office of the president in a gazette signed in 2016 by President Nelson Zulu for Comnet News, Lusaka. President Haga Inde Hijrema has left for Benguera province in Angola to attend the official handover ceremony of the Lobito Corridor operations. The Lobito Corridor operations will be serving a, as a pathway uh, for free movement of goods and services between Angola and Zambia, including the Democratic Republic of Congo. On his Facebook page, President Hichirema commended President João Manuel Gonkakev Lorenko for, the, for this initiative. He also thanked the Democratic Republic of Congo President Felix Shisekedi for agreeing to work with Zambia in unlocking trade facilities such as the Lobito Corridor operations. On that note, we break for some commercials. We have more news coming up. Don't go away. In our quest to save nations and develop Africa, Savenda is investing in the agriculture sector so as to produce supply for both local and international markets. Housing over 12,000 pullets that are nurtured and fed with our locally made stock feed that comes from our own locally grown maize and soya beans. All processed from our recently installed milling and mixing plant. Our over 95,000 layers have an output capacity of over 1,500 trays of fresh eggs per day that are carefully selected and packaged for all the leading stores and supermarkets nationwide. Our greenhouses are fitted with the latest irrigation system and the seedlings are nurtured to ensure only healthy plants reach the fields. With our deliberate planting schedule, we are better placed to supply constantly without interruption, thus reliable. Savenda Farms is also changing lives of its dedicated workforce drawn from the local community and beyond. So the next time you think fresh and green, think Savenda Farms. Deborah, have you connected to the Wi-Fi on the bus? It's fast, it's amazing. I've just downloaded my books and I'm about to complete the series. It's nice too. Ah uh, no, I'm actually watching a reality show. He's about to propose. Oh, so sweet. Make your trip seem short yet comfortable and safe when you use the UBZ luxurious fully air-conditioned coaches that come fitted with amazing onboard entertainment. 
passenger information services, coffee making facilities and fridge for your hot and cold beverages, free and interrupted Wi-Fi for your gadgets, phone charging facilities, comfortable seats that recline to offer extra resting posture, safety seat belts, adjustable reading lights for each traveling client and of course, clean flushing toilets for your convenience. So travel in luxury and safety with UBZ Luxurious Coaches. UBZ will always take you there. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver Precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Thank you very much for staying with us. We continue with the news. The Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection has proposed that the non-taxable threshold under the pay-as-you-end structure in the 2024 budget should be pushed to 6,000 quarter in order to provide relief to workers. In an interview with Cabinet News, JCTR Executive Director says the current threshold of 4,800 quarter is way above the cost of living which is averaging 7,000 quarter. Meanwhile, the Civil Society for Poverty Reduction CSPR, has called for increased funding to the social sectors in the 2024 national budget. Here's a report. The budgeting process is important as it sets the base for the outcomes of development programs for the year ahead. Finance and National Planning Minister Dr. Stumbe Komosokotwane has been engaging various stakeholders to get their submissions for the 2024 national budget. Notably, various citizens have been raising concerns over the high cost of living as basic commodities such as milli meal are fetching beyond the means of many Zambians and others have been asking authorities to include them on social protection programs such as the social cash transfer scheme. Civil Society for Poverty Reduction CSPR program manager A. Dimusosa has urged the government to increase funding to social sectors in the 2024 national budget. As this has been the case that we, has made, we have made to our creditors that, you know, debt servicing was crowding out social sector expenditure and had we continued on that trajectory, the living conditions for citizens would have worsened. For us as CSPR, what we therefore look forward in the upcoming 2024 budget is more resources allocated to these social sectors, but also the targeted beneficiaries or citizen population to increase. If it's social protection, we should be able to, over the next three years, when we're undergoing this debt restructuring, to at least attain 100% of all uh, extremely poor households being on social assistance support. We need to see more uh, recruitment of public service workers, especially in critical social sectors like education and health, because if we look at the, the, the user service provider ratio, it is still very high even though we've made uh, minor strides. Uh, thirdly and most importantly, we anticipate that the government will be more consultative because now we are looking at how are we going to share the resources that have been accrued as a result of us restructuring our debt. Therefore, we, we want to see government engaging more meaningfully. And Jesuit Center for Theological Reflections, JSUTR Executive Director, Father Alex Miebe, has proposed that the non-taxable threshold under the pay as you end structure should be pushed to 6,000 quarter in order to provide relief to some workers. We would propose therefore that 5,000, even 6,000 uh, as a, uh, the minimum threshold for uh, uh, per year would uh, be something that would provide some relief. We know the government is struggling also to uh, uh, also increase the, their revenue base, uh, but at the same time, uh, this is the government which is also looking at the, the uh, needs of the majority of the population uh, who 
uh, need to be cushioned. Uh, there are various measures that are being put in place, including the social protection programs or uh, uh, social cash transfer, but the measure that can uh, cater a number of people and provide a relief, uh, I think, is the, the, when it comes to the minimum uh, 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 tax threshold, if that can be increased to uh, something in the region of 6,000 uh, uh, kwacha, that will make a, a, a good relief for, for the people of, the, of, the Zambia, of Zambia. Whether or not these recommendations will be accommodated, for now, we can only wait and see. Patrick Soko, Camnet News. Tidilabombwe Member of Parliament, Apo Kaboswe, says the construction of the Tidilabombwe District Hospital is 90% complete and will be opened to the general public in the third quarter of 2023. Mr. Kaboswe, who spoke shortly after touring the facility, says the only thing the facility is awaiting now is equipment before it can be handed over to government. The lawmaker says despite the facility not being completed within the agreed time frame, he is impressed with the level of works done so far and looks forward to the facility being commissioned. He says his office is in serious discussions with the Minister of Health to expand the facility uh, to include the maternity wing and a mortuary. Later late than never. We are late looking at the deadline that we gave, but uh, here it is. We have delivered it. It's I... done and uh, we're just waiting for commission. We are done. It's basically now equipment coming in and a few final touches here and there, but basically the, the building is done. And we are hoping, we are in this serious discussion with our counterpart at the Ministry of Health. You remember the minister visited the place and uh, that the same contractor who has done the works, by the way, the Zambian contractor who has done this, can continue with phase two, which will include wards, maternity wing, the mortuary, and everything else that should should be at the hospital. That is our push, because we know that if we were to start retendering, it may cost us time, and we don't have time. So that, that, that's our discussion with uh, the, my, my counterpart, the minister. Three people have been arrested in Mansa district of Luapula province for the offense of unlawful possession of suspected sugilite mineral ore and criminal trespass. Police Deputy Spokesperson Danny Mwale says the three suspects identified as Nelson Kalembwe of Nchelenge district Zebedi Lukwesa of Chilanga District in Lusaka and Moton Sikazwe of Mansa District were found in position of the suspected mineral ore on the 3rd of July 2023 at a named lodge in Mansa District. Mr. Mwale says this was after police received a tip-off from a concerned member of the public. He says it is also alleged that there are three, the three trespassers on Catros Mine Limited were, where they blasted and picked some minerals suspected to be sugilite around 20 hours on the 2nd of July 2023. The police deputy spokesperson says the suspected mineral ore has since been handed over to the Ministry of Mines for laboratory tests. All the three suspects are detained in police custody, yet to be form formally charged. On that note, we take another set of commercials, but still ahead, we have international and sports news. Don't go away. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage.
ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Get all the latest updates in court news only on Kamne TV. We take you and make you feel part of the court sessions through our in-depth coverage of the adjudication process. Get informed on those that have been arrested, delayed and denied the police bond or bail victims, persons taking plea, court adjournments, verdicts and those administration issues in the judiciary. Comnet TV is on channel 274 on DSTV, channel 25 on GoTV, and find us on channel 106 on Topstar. You can also follow and give us a like on our social media platforms. Comnet TV, not just another channel. The king of Zulus, South Africa's most powerful customary ruler, says he was in good shape after the sudden death of one of his close advisors sparked fears of poisoning. Musu Zulu Zulu 48, also known as Musu Zulu Kazuetini, acceded to the throne last year on the on the death of his father, Godwell Zulatini, following a bitter family succession battle. King Zulatini, who died after reigning for more than 50 years, left behind six wives and at least 28 children. Here is a roundup of international news. Most people may not be familiar with gallium or germanium, but these metals are crucial for the development of products such as semiconductors, solar panels, electric vehicles and smartphones. China is the world's biggest supplier of these raw materials, and their export will soon be controlled. From the beginning of August, firms will need to apply for permits and supply information about their intended use to gain access. Beijing says the new restriction will protect China's national security. China has always been committed to maintaining the security and stability of the global production and supply chain. It's a common international practice for the Chinese government to impose export controls on relevant items in accordance with the law, without targeting any specific country. The move is expected to disrupt global supply chains and is being seen as a response to wide-ranging high-tech export controls imposed on Chinese technology firms by the United States. It also comes days after the Dutch government imposed similar restrictions on the sale of crucial chip-making equipment. The US and the Netherlands are among major importers of Chinese gallium and germanium. I think the first audience, of course, are those who are making these kinds of decisions, which is to say, look, um, everybody holds cards and we can all play this game. The cost of these raw materials has surged, though South Korea and Taiwan have downplayed the impact of the regulation on their firms. Some analysts fear this move will provoke further similar measures between Beijing and Washington. During his visit to Beijing last month, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended U.S. controls as security-related and denied Washington was trying to contain China. Beijing has accused the U.S. of encirclement and suppression. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is expected in Beijing this week for a trip aimed at further stabilizing deteriorating ties. Trade and economic cooperation are atop the agenda, and it's likely Beijing will use the control of gallium and germanium as a bargaining chip in its negotiations. Katrina Yu, Al Jazeera, Beijing. To Thailand now, with the newly elected... <laughs> South Africa's Zulu King has said he is in good health despite fears of poisoning at the weekend following the death of a close aide. Misu Zulu Zulu spoke on Monday from neighboring country Eswatini, where he was undergoing medical exams which he described as routine. The king ascended the throne last year following his father's death amidst a bitter feud over the royal succession. And Nathan, the prophets, and... His spokesperson said on Sunday that the king was in perfect health and denounced an orchestrated attempt to spread unfounded rumors about his health. As the one who rests. 
While kings have no executive powers in South Africa, sovereigns and traditional chiefs are constitutionally recognized and exercise profound moral authority over their people. Senegalese woke up Tuesday to the news that President Macky Sall would not seek a third term in next year's presidential polls. On Monday evening, he addressed the nation and ended months of tense uncertainty. This, the car resident, was satisfied. Like all Senegalese yesterday, we were able to tune in to the President of the Republic's address. Well, he came out on top. As you might have noticed, Senegal has recently been going through some very difficult times. And to get the country out of this situation, the President has taken a wise measure to get Senegal out of it, as he has always done. The banner headline of some local newspapers held a dignifying decision. The leader has spent 11 years in office. There have been widespread fears that Sal's declaration about his political future could spark new waves of unrest throughout the West African nation. Violence had indeed been expected because the Senegalese youth has become very alert and demanding. And they are demanding their share of democratic participation in this country. The president's speech was a real relief. However, the truth is that we all need to refocus to see how we can move Senegal forward in the strata of contemporary democracy. Macky Sall had stoked tensions over whether he would use a constitutional revision to argue he could extend the country's traditional two-term limit. The president did maintain Monday it would have been lawful for him to run. Some Senegalese hope his non-candidacy will serve as an example. Macky Sall has resolved the situation. Now any future president will know very well that he can only serve two terms and then leave. For example, if Macky Sall had done the opposite, another president would have come, then changed the constitution to do everything in his power to stay there. But that's all over now. This time limit problem has now been resolved. It has definitely been resolved. Sall's supporters now await the identity of the one who will run on the ticket of Sall's party. Some of his opponents are cautious, arguing other regional leaders promised not to seek a controversial term only to do so. And now in sports news, Copa Queen's midfielder Avel Chitundu says her team will be facing stronger opponents at the Women's FIFA World Cup slated for this month, but that they will have to approach each game without fear. Chitundu says she is happy that her team has reached the finals on, on those playing in the World Cup and that this calls for the team to work even harder. She further says the international friendly games that the team has had also exposed their weaknesses, which they are working to resolve. First of all, I would just want to say thank you to the Almighty God. It wasn't easy, and I'm very much happy making to the finalist because it wasn't easy. There was some tough competition. Uh, it actually makes me feel like I need to push more because I haven't have been having some international friendly, so I need to push at that because the game that we're going to have there, they are not easy. Uh, actually, the, the game is very big, but we, we don't have that fear. We, we are led to face any team because as, 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 as the game comes, we we'll take them serious because there's nothing that we can do but just to push very hard you know, they are very mm, big, big games. Now we'll, we'll just try. Uh, the only thing that I can say is the teams, they are not that simple. But as people say, mm, success is behind fear. So we we'll just have to, to go behind that fear so that we have the success of winning all the games there. Mm, all I can say is we, we should just continue working extra hard and take each game as we face so serious. I just want to say thank you for everyone. Actually, you guys are the best.
Before we end the news, let's have another look at the stories that made the headlines. Mrs. Compound residents bemoan the high millimeter prices. Government denies demonization of former President Edgar Lungo's family. Social scientists predict the fall of the patriotic front. And in international news, South Africa's Zulu king denies being poisoned. And in sports news, Copa Queen's midfielder Avoj Tundu optimistic of a better performance at the World Cup. Before we go, let's now look at the cabinet verse of the day, which comes from the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 7, and it reads, And I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. That's it. That's all we had for the news. Don't forget to join us for another bulletin on behalf of the entire production team. Have a blessed night.